So here's the uncomfortable truth. The biggest barrier between you and your big vision, dreams, and goals may actually be you. Hello, 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 and welcome to More Than Money, a podcast where we have nuanced conversations about money, business, and life, where we take the time to explore the human side of money because success with money is never just about the numbers. I'm your host, Jacquette Timmons, and I am really, really glad that you were here with me today. So whether this is your very first episode or one of many, a welcome. And before we dive into today's episode, you might be interested in an upcoming event that I'm hosting. I'm hosting a live Q&A session to answer your questions about pricing in general and about the next Pricing Made Human Masterclass that will happen in December. So if you are an entrepreneur or business owner and you have questions about pricing, like what dollar amount should I set for a particular product or service? You know, what should I raise potentially my prices to for existing offers? You know, how does that action affect the positioning of what I am providing, et cetera, then join us, especially because you already know that pricing is the backbone of every single business. And it is that lever that can make the difference between having a thriving business and life or not. So I'd love to answer your questions about pricing in general and about the Pricing Made Human Masterclass and the framework that I share with you there. So if you're interested, send me a DM on Instagram and in that DM, write P-M-H-Q-N-A, P for pricing, M for made, H for human, the letter Q, the appersand, and A, P-M-H-Q-N-A. Send that DM to me on Instagram and you will get the RSVP link to join us. And if I didn't say it already, the live Q&A session event is free. So in the meantime, though, let's get into today's show. I bet if you asked people about their vision, their dreams, and their goals, that you would often hear the word big in front of each one. I know it's true for me. While I don't consider myself as someone whose vision and dreams are quote unquote small, or as someone who tends to set very, very safe goals, I recently had one of those moments where I thought, ooh, I'm not dreaming big enough. And not only was that a surprise, what was also a surprise was the source from which it came. It was completely unexpected because it was a conversation with someone that I was meeting for the very first time. And I am curious, when was the last time that someone asked you, what's your goal? And then where are you now um, as it relates to that goal? Followed by, what well, what would it look like to, or what would it look like if? And whatever they said that followed that to or that if was related to your goal, yes, but on a much bigger scale. And as you heard their words, your heart kind of like skipped a beat and it made you like think and wonder, ooh, could I do that? Such that by the time the conversation ended, you had a new stretch goal for yourself that you previously had never envisioned. Can you relate to this scenario or, or can you even just imagine this scenario? Are you getting excited about it? Here's why I'm asking you. Because we have reached that time of the year when there are more days behind us than ahead. And perhaps like me, you are now reflecting on that gap between where you thought you would be right now on certain goals and where you actually are. And while the gap may be obvious and very clear to you, what may be less noticeable is how you might have shrunk your vision, your dreams, and your goals to fit within the limit of your comfort zone because the reality of what you have been experiencing as you've tried to achieve that goal or those goals has pushed the idea of what's possible aside. 
As you work toward your vision, your dreams, and your goals, it's inevitable that challenges will arise. So you're not expecting that you're not going to experience, you know, a major setback, for example, or have an unexpected roadblock, or just, you know, have to navigate simply the everyday grind of managing your responsibilities. You kind of expect that, but then when you bump up against them, it's all, it sometimes feels like a shock. And the and, and these obstacles can start to wear on you and wear you down emotionally, physically, mentally, or a little bit of each. And initially, though, as you're bumping up against them, you push through because you you realize that, you know, it's never going to be just a straight, you know, point A to point B uninterrupted road. So you initially you kind of push through and you're determined to stay on course. But over time. As you bump up against more and more of these, the weight of these challenges begin to lead to doubt, begin to lead to frustration, or maybe even burnout. So slowly, almost imperceptibly, you find yourself beginning to adjust your goals, not because your vision has changed, but because the path has simply become too difficult and too darn draining. And now you're starting to make decisions and choices from a place of fatigue rather than ambition. And what is tricky is that this shift is often subtle. You might find yourself telling yourself that you are being realistic, maybe even pragmatic. But what is actually happening is that you're shrinking your goals to fit your current circumstances rather than rising above them. I know sometimes easier said than done, but this is when you begin to get in your own way because now you're playing it safe and maybe you are, you know, getting in your own way, not only by playing it safe, but by procrastinating or even convincing yourself that a smaller goal is more achievable. So let me go after the smaller goal. And therefore the dreams that, you know, you once thought were big and bold now suddenly seem too distant. And instead of adjusting your strategies to overcome those obstacles, you adjust your vision to fit within the comfort zone of what you think is doable. But here's something for you to think about. We like to think that our vision, our dreams, and our goals are solely our own, shaped entirely by our own desires, passions, and ambitions. And while that is true to a point, the reality is that our dreams are heavily influenced by others, those we know, as well as those strangers that we've just met. And sometimes those others are messengers who can inspire you to think big, who can, you know, help you to expand the scope of your dreams and to inspire you to set even bigger goals, not just for the end result that you will achieve or experience, but for the reserve that you will need to tap into to become the person who achieves those things or experiences those things. I bring that up because Because of the conversation I had, I am now inspired to plant seeds to make some bold moves in 2025 that I hadn't considered before. And I happen to be a pretty forward thinking person. Um, And they are moves that both excite me, but also fill me with a combination of joy and fear. But what I appreciate about the conversation that I had is the recognition that sometimes what you need to do is borrow the energy and ambition of other people. People with bold or bolder visions than your own. People who have perhaps a smaller gap than what you do right now between where they are and where they thought you would be and where you are and where you thought you would be. People who can help you to expand your sense of what's possible. People who remind you that, yeah, at the end of the day, It is worth it to have that big vision, that big dream, and that goal. What it also means, though, is you have to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself from the influence of people 
who will let you play it safe and settle for just enough. So one suggestion that I have for you today is to make sure that you are surrounding yourself with people who can, one, help you to envision expansive goals, two, shift your mindset to match your dreams, three, take bold, deliberate actions toward your goals, four, stay the course despite the challenges, and then five, celebrate your progress because you don't want to just keep grinding, grinding, grinding and never pause to celebrate how far you have come, even if you haven't reached the ultimate endpoint, wherever that may be. And just as your people matter, your environment, ma your environment matters too, because it plays a role. And some environments foster complacency that can help keep you stuck while others foster your creativity, your ambition, and your growth. The truth though, is that both influence how you think and act, how well you stay focused on uh, your process and your progress, and the degree to which you can tap into new ideas along the way because you can actually see them. And so in other words, the environment that, environment that you find yourself in plays a really big deal. So here's my second question for you. How intentional are you in making sure that you are in positive spaces that help you to thrive and align um, with what it is that you are striving to achieve? And if your environment isn't as dynamic and growth oriented as you need it to be, what is one small thing you can do today to make it so? And by the way, what I'm talking about environment, I am talking about physical environment. So like your home space, your working space, the social settings in which you, you know, find yourself hanging out in, <clears throat> excuse me, but I'm also talking about environment in terms of what are you doing to take care of your emotional environment, your mental environment. So think along those lines as well. And since we're talking about environments, we got to talk about structure because structure creates the environment for consistent progress and it helps you to counteract some of those common tendencies, you know, like procrastination, uh, like being easily distracted or not making any progress because you're so caught up in perfectionism. And the truth is, no vision, no goal, no dream is realized without structure, otherwise known as a concatenation of habits, routines, and systems that help you get from point A to point B. So individually and collectively, your structure acts as the scaffolding, if you will, that helps to hold you accountable, that helps to keep you focused, that helps to prevent you from getting in your own way. And it does this, that structure does this by giving you clarity, by giving you consistency, and by helping you to see the direction of that roadmap, again, going back to clarity a little more clearly. Plus, the structure is what gives you the ability to take a step back and break down your big vision, your dream, and your goals into smaller, more manageable milestones. And when you lack structure or the discipline to honor it, that is when you are most susceptible to getting in your own way. And the uncomfortable truth may be that the biggest barrier between your big visions and your dreams and your goals may actually be you. But here's the good news. Just as that is a possibility, right? There's the possibility that you can get in your own way. The other reality is, is that you have the agency to also be the driving force to get out of your own way. And you can do this by doing three things. <clears throat> Excuse me. One, you can do this by recognizing when you have shrunk your vision, your dreams, and your goals to fit within the limits of your comfort zone. You can do this by realizing um, when you've lost sight of what's possible because you've just, you know, you've gotten worn down by the challenges and the, you know, the roadblocks. And you can also do this by surrounding yourself with visionaries, with believers, and those who see your potential where you are more focused right now on the limits. 
their influence can really go a long way in helping you break through barriers and reach heights you just never thought possible. It is October when I am recording this episode. And I know that for some people, they wait until the literal end of the year to reflect on the year and to start planning for the year ahead. However, even in the midst of all the stuff that is going on, I'm going to suggest that you get a head start on this project. And yes, I do think of it as a project because who knows, like me, you may discover, ooh, I'm not dreaming big enough. And if that's the case, why wait until next year to course correct when you can start to do that now, when you can start to do that at any point in the year? And you know, the way that I look at it, doing that, right, taking that moment to take stock now and see if you need to course correct and then taking action on that, that is one way that you can bet on yourself. And you already know from your past experiences and the results of those past experiences, you never lose when you bet on yourself. Well, that is a wrap for today, folks. As always, thank you for listening or maybe even watching if you are joining us on YouTube. And if you like what you've heard and would like to show appreciation for this podcast or perhaps this particular episode, please do me a favor and share it because when you share it with those in your circle, it helps us to reach more people than we could on our own. And if you happen to be listening on Apple podcast, please take a moment and hit those stars and go on ahead and give us a five-star review and leave a rating there. And I'm asking you to do all of this on both whatever your, you know, podcast platform is and on YouTube, because it helps us with the algorithm. Let's be real about that. And when you help us with the algorithm, we can be found much more easily by people who are interested in the conversations that we have over here about money, business, and life. And of course, If you are on YouTube, please comment below. If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jaquette, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jaquette. And again, if you'd like to join us for the live Q&A session on pricing, remember it is a free event. Just send me a DM on Instagram with PMH Q&A, PMH Q&A. Thanks again for listening or watching as the case may be. I will be back with another episode and I hope that you will too. Until then, remember, it's about more than money.